But thank you so much for coming back. At this point, I'm part of the family. Like, you are my sister, you're my brother, you're my cousin, you are my sibling. For today's video, you see, I'm sitting down. It's a lot of your story time. A lot was going on here. A lot was going on. <laughs> my boarding school experience. Would I go back? Never. I'm never going. If anyone asks me to go back to that place, never. I'll never go back. <laughs> You want me to die of depression? You want me to die? <laughs> Never in a million times I would ever choose this experience ever again. I would. What I. I hated it, guys. I hated boarding school. I hated it. <clears throat> I hated it. That's all I'm gonna say. I hated it. The cameras, because I'm just. I hated it. That's all you have to know. First things first, I'm going to highlight that. It wasn't my first time going to boarding school. I was once about a grade one to grade four and I loved that experience. Possibly because I was still young, I was still an infant, I was still a child, you know. And nothing was really deep there, nothing was really emotional, nothing was personal, nothing was beefy, you know. But it's fine. And I heard that I was going for boarding school. I was so excited. I'm not gonna lie, I was so excited. I was over the moon. I was I expected vibes upon vibes. I expected it to be amazing. I won't even lie. I expected what I what I experienced when I was in junior school, you know. But then people in high school are pretty much evil and they don't care. So I guess I jinxed it. When I went to boarding school, guys, I thought it, I thought everything was going to be G. I thought people were gonna like me. The previous school I was in, people liked me. Or maybe they were pretending, I mean, no, but people seemed like they liked me, guys. So when I went there, guys, I had this perception could people were going to like me. Yeah. Hi. Chai. <laughs> Total opposite. I think majority of the people didn't like me. And you could just feel it. You, no one, you know, people don't have to say they don't like you. People can show that they don't like you. Yeah, the saying action speaks louder than the words. What, what, Tinja? You'll be just saying, oh, well, guys, hmm. I thought people were gonna like me. And guess what? They didn't like me. You heard me, right? They didn't like me. And they really showed, they really did the most. They went out of their way to show they didn't like me. That was boarding school. I experienced a lot of scenarios where certain staff members used to talk about me negatively i experienced so many scenarios and majority of the time i was innocent like major majority of the time i was innocent in boarding like i know when i'm wrong guys i can feel it in the in the inside but in Napa, over here i really messed up i know but majority of the time i was innocent this teacher they went to the principal Okay, he was the person wasn't a principal, but then they were like in that hierarchy, you know. And then they said so many nasty things about me that was so false. They really did the most, guys. They went and then they were like, um, oh, Ashley is bullying kids. Yo, Ashley is uh, she's challenging the system. Well, of course, as an art student, I did challenge the system sometimes, but then in this scenario, I didn't. Ashley's challenging her system. Ashley's disrespecting her peers. She's no respect for me. Yo, 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 she was really ranting out there, doing the most for herself. Shame. She was really, you know. And I remember the time when I was actually shouted at for that, guys. I was shouted at for that. Hmm. Firstly, like I said, staff members did the most. They really spoke about me negatively a lot, and I didn't really like it. I felt like you know when you go for you know when you go to boarding school, you expect you expect like um. It to be like your second home but it was like i was it was hell on earth i was like i was in hell but i really didn't like it because i honestly felt like as a teacher right you're supposed to look out for me as like your second temporary child but here you are doing the most you know trying to make my life hell was that what you employed for ne? like was that is that in your job description because as far as i'm concerned it's not and making someone's life miserable is not in your job description as bunk beds bank beds 
I felt as though I was sleeping on metal. Metal, guys, do you know how that how painful that is? Sleeping on metal. It's as if you're sleeping on concrete. That's how painful it was. Sometimes you'd sleep and it's as though like you're having nightmares and you're not even yet sleeping. Like you just close your eyes and you can already see monsters in like under your bed and you can already just it was just so uncomfortable. The the bunk beds were terrible. They didn't have like they were just they were made of metal. You know how like other bunk beds are made of like wood, right? Ours were made out of metal. And they had these sharp ends that if you bumped it, it would literally scrape off your skin, guys. It would literally scrape off your skin. And it wouldn't treat you it treated you like it was the devil guys that bang bed was literally the devil in an object form because honestly bro, you, i would have back pains every single day i would have back pains from those bang beds you cannot make a bang bed out of metal and then you leave the edges sharp and pointy and then they've got that crusty thing at the end that can literally scrape off someone's whole skin I hated like this whole thing of meeting new people. I don't like getting to know people. I don't like meeting new people. Most of you might say I'm pessimistic, but I just don't like this whole scenario of getting to know someone. It's a whole long process. And most of the times people have poker faces. Some people are double standard, standard dead. So how do I affect the daily living issue? Double standards. Some people are two faced, guys. I just don't like it, and this really showed me. But it showed me that you never really know someone until you really know them. Like you, you can, you never really know someone. You can spend a whole two years, a whole freaking year with someone, and you still won't know them because some of them be faking in the streets. Okay, really, I didn't really like the whole process of getting to know people, being put in places in our dorms or rooms with people that you don't really know where they're coming from and you don't know what background, you don't know what they did or you don't know where which spirit follows them or you don't know, like you just don't know what someone, you just don't expect, like you just don't know. Sharing was really difficult, it wasn't something nice but I had to adjust. You know, and official at our school, our school was new guys. So like the hostels weren't built when this like when we went to school. We were staying in like these boarding houses. And the boarding houses, right? You know, a room that's meant to have two people, they would put four people in that one room. And then after that, we start squishing and squashing each other in that one room, Jay. After squishing and squashing each other, you're told to a cupboard, a cupboard is supposed to be used by one person, but you see two people using that one cupboard, and you ask yourself why? Like, does that make sense? Like, we had two bathrooms, right? We had two bathrooms, and from those two bathrooms, I may tell you guys, be told to bath for one minute. One minute? Who? How do you? As a girl, like, not even, like, it's not even as a human, as a girl, guys. Some of us, some people have special needs, like, a certain times of the month and you tell a girl to bath for one minute what are you removing there like what dirt are you literally scrubbing in one minute honestly is that even realistic for you to bath for one minute and you say you've bathed it's as though you're just throwing water on your body and you're done and then you put vaseline and then you put back that dirt ah. <laughs> and to talk about the fact that some people would leave their dirt in the tub they would leave their dirt in the tub after you you know that's funny creamy creamy <laughs> You know that funny creamy creamy thing at the edge of the tub when someone is bathed in there and then they leave their creamy creamy <laughs> and they leave their creamy creamy in the tub there and you're just like oh and sometimes you really see things you're not supposed to see like ah but it's not dirty for me ah the food Guys, the food was cold. Some of the chefs cook like they didn't wanna cook. It's as though they were being forced to be chefs. So as though they didn't choose their own job professions. It's, 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 it's as though they didn't know what they're getting themselves into in the first place. And it was as though like the food guys, number one, they would put too much oil, guys. They would put so much oil in the food. So they were really wanting us to get heart diseases there. Too much salt sometimes, not even any salt. The food was forever cold majority of the time, guys. <clears throat> the food was forever cold and you know like when you eat cold food ne? and then like it's digested and then in the stomach is going grum, 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 grum. <laughs> over here like and then the stomach and then oh, and the, it's like at the tip tip at the top of the stomach you can feel the cold of the like now it's like as though you're forcing your stomach to hit the food inside the stomach because the food is just cold then you hear the stomach going grum, grum. it's really fighting to digest and your stomach is saying i don't want this cold food and you're really forcing the food to digest there ah, I that was that was emotional and biological abuse oh 
ah guys the cold food sometimes like the food would be hot right but the majority of the time like people like you know when they say supper is served at six o'clock then you know like then the food is dished right and then now you're waiting for people who are busy modeling to the dh they're modeling to the dh they're modeling to the dining room and then now by 6 15 they now come and it's now time to eat and all the food is cold guys and now everyone needs to suffer because some people are just really slow they're just so slow in things i really didn't like that people were just so audacious guys people were just so tenacious they're just so like is they're just so daring about certain things that are not relevant you know there's certain things you can really challenge right but there's just certain things that you just see are like just so irritating and personally like majority of the time right i had beef with most of the people in in, in boarding school right i had beef with a lot of people and you know just seeing someone's face every day and you know you don't like seeing their face you don't like their face number two you don't like them number three you don't like the, their their voice or you don't like whatever they do guys you get so irritated because you, you just don't want to have anything to do with it but you got no choice because you're staying they are staying in the same lodgings and it's just one of those like oh well it's your choice it's not my fault like it's you know the vibes i really met really special individuals when i say special special individuals guys i mean special individuals there are certain individuals that really did the most when it came to being rude when it came to lying when it came to fakeness guys when it came to pretending when it came to manipulation when it came to gullibility guys there were so many people that were doing the most ministers you know they were part of the secret service you know they were the ones who were ceos of spying you know honestly i kind of blame my old school because my old school really concealed a much a majority of the real world problems of life you know you know one day you just wake up and then you're already being called you're being called to the the, the matron's room hey you did this and it's a lie or you did that or you're being called by the directors or you're having a disciplinary hearing for something that's really irrelevant or it doesn't make sense like certain things right you just be called and you're like she said i did that eh? like hey, when um and majority of the time it's people in hostel people in boarding who were the cause of it like most of the times guys of course sometimes i would screw up and i know i messed up right there sometimes i knew that i was wrong and i did something wrong and i accepted my faults right and i would actually be like i know i'm sorry right but then there's just sometimes where you just don't know what you've done you haven't even done anything you're just walking around and breathing and already it's a problem to certain individuals it's people used to steal each other's i remember guys my socks were stolen i will not forget i went to I went for boarding with five new pair of socks and they were literally labeled. They were embroidered those socks, guys. They were written Ashley Shamu, guys. And I remember when I left the hostel, I had two. When I left boarding school, I had two pairs of socks. Where did the other three go? Of course, the old, my lucky socks were the ones I've had since four months. I've had these white socks, guys. I've had these white socks since four months and now forever. Like, I've been wearing them for my whole six years, right? Credits, guys. I'm <laughs> But I had like I think I had three pairs of lucky socks since the ones I've had since four months because I just really like those socks, like right? those white socks. Yeah. Then I had five new pair of socks, guys. Very clean, very smart. Those socks were those socks were like good quality, you know. Those you know those SA socks, right? Those South African socks, those white nice socks, right? That you know you will not get them in Zimbabwe. And then some child has the audacity to take my socks, guys. Hmm. Talk about stealing food, guys. Stealing tuck. My, guys, people's tuck would go missing, guys. People's tuck would go missing from no. You know, you would come back with, you know, you'd come to for both them with like a, a full pack of knickknacks or a full pack of chomkins or a full pack of mm, those apples, those those sweets those big bomb lollipops or something and then each day you see they're decreasing more than you're taking and you're asking yourself why are they missing ah, people's things used to be stolen people's perfumes used to be stolen in hostel guys i remember majority of the time some certain teachers would lie on behalf of students would be like here yeah, the girls are being disrespectful the girls are doing this the girls are doing that and then you will see some of the teachers are really doing the most as well they are out doing the students themselves like bruh ah, yeah hectic H for hectic. 
go, yo, yo, yo. I remember this one time, someone really did the most. I still don't know who it was to this day, but someone really did the most. They went and said, oh, Ashley is, is seducing the male teachers with a short skirt. Oh, wow, 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 wow. But, bruh, if it's a pleated skirt, right, and you, if you see the design of the skirt, it's meant to be short. You know those South African pleated skirts? Our uniforms were made in South Africa. Why would you expect? It's supposed to be a short skirt. And then, hey, you have someone who's really doing the most. Someone has got the audacity to win. Snitch on me. Oh, Ashley, skirt. And I remember, guys, for a certain period of time, some of my things were missing, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one thing I would never, I would never, ever, ever forget is bathing with cold water, guys. Number one, bathing for cold water, and number two, fighting for the shower, fighting for the bathroom, knowing that if you don't wake up early, you're not going to bath. Sometimes people would forget to switch on the geezer, guys. The geezer, would, they wouldn't switch on the geezer. And now you wake up, because me and my roommate, we used to wake up at 3 a.m., guys, to bath. I would open the tap, and the water is freezing cold. Have you ever, have you ever woken up at 5 a.m., not even 5 a.m., 3 a.m. and tried to and open the tap, the tap, the cold water tap, you know, and you feel that, I think you guys should do it, go at 3 a.m. or 5 a.m., whatever time, like, earliest hours possible, go open the tap at 3 a.m. and open that cold water, and you feel how cold that water is, that's what I always to bother, guys, especially in Poland, guys, that's what I used to bother, it. But in some of us, guys, our body is really sensitive. The moment you bath with cold water, you're already having a flu, you're already having a cold. And some people would not even bath nicely because they were scared. And some of us, some people start smelling because they weren't bathing, they were bathing with cold water, guys. In Anka. Bathing with cold water and number two, fighting for the sh You know, like, fighting for the shower. Of which, okay, I know this affects a lot of people because if you fight for the shower, you should know that... Once someone books three places for their friend in front, right? You know that she's supposed to be number five or six or seven. And another person will book. And now you're the last one to bath. And now you're just there like a mumu and yeah, you get left and around the whole hostel and you have bath and others are changing. And it's not just weird and awkward like Fighting for the shower is hectic, guys. It really taught people to hustle. This is why people in the streets be hustling because they learned how to do it in boarding school. Because my boarding school experience was the worst. Would I go back? No. Much as I'm really complaining about boarding school, there are some things that I actually appreciated. Like, okay, in as much as I was saying that it was boring, cold food, but then cold water, fighting for lines or queues and all of that right it was funny in the sense that you gotta do this as a like as a group it was like mob suffering you know mob suffering when you suffer as like as a whole group of people or when you struggle as a whole group of people it's not that hard and it's not that painful it's actually a bit fun because at least when you're in that moment you complain you console each other and you 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 get over it as a group like there's sometimes we have really nice one sessions talking about certain places we went to go tell us where they went what used to happen at the school would have these group discussions would watch movies together would watch tv together would have these nice like bonding sessions and some of those actually got it cherished so it's not as if like boarding school was that bad like it was like horror like it was just unbearable it was hell of course there are, the, there are those moments that was so unbearable there are those moments where i experienced so much difficulty but overall guys there's some things that were just nice about boarding that you will never experience as a day scholar like there are just some things you know like let's say if you need help with homework you can ask your classmates can you please help me with this 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 but when you're a day scholar wow you, what can you do you're all alone maybe with the internet but sometimes the internet doesn't even give you the answers to begin with so yeah like they, those are just some of the things i experienced as a border like i don't know what you guys experience if you feel free to come in the comment section guys what you guys also experienced in boarding school how you saw it personally yes the, the were good moments but then the good moments were outweighed by the bad so i honestly would not want to redo that whole scenario again that whole year i was supposed to do boarding school for two years but after the whole year i was just like i can't handle this i can't bear this anymore i'm done i'm not gonna do this ever again i would rather be a day scholar so yeah thank you so much guys for tuning in to this boarding school experience I know I might be sounding like someone who's really overreacting or dramatic, but I actually topped the stuff down a notch. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share the link to your friends and their friends and their cousins, siblings. Share it to anyone you know. 
share it to anyone you know and share it to anyone you know you would really relate to this situation especially if you know that they were like you guys suffered together please do share this also please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't if it's your first time please subscribe to team a star you know the joy you know the vibes already and yeah thank you so much for showing me love and guys i'm forever grateful like i'm just forever grateful for everything that all of you guys have been doing for me for all those who have spread their links thank you thank you and until next time bye Mwah. But you tell him you're a fine man, oh, big things he got a dynamite.